literacy rates around sustainability are about 5% and it's, um, it's pretty criminal, so we need to do something about it. So the first thing is to be asking teachers to be teaching more about this topic. It is today typically only in the geography curriculum, so we need to uh, encourage the kids to be asking the teachers. The resources are there for teachers to add it into the curriculum. The school boards need to be encouraged to add it into the curriculum. And one of the difficulties is that it is interdisciplinary and in the thinking that we need to, to change the way we think. And it should be in every course, not just in one small piece of a geography curriculum. So. Um, so that's the first thing, but there's lots of stuff out there where people can go and look at uh, online. Um, I would point you to the Resources for Rethinking database, which is uh, run by Learning for a Sustainable Future, and lots of great curriculum in there for people to look at. Uh, and then, of course, there are more and more universities who are starting to teach this stuff, and colleges too. Um, really encourage them to start thinking about how they can build it into more courses and asking the, the uh, educational institutions for it as well. We spend a lot of time and effort on doing the right thing and um, trying to make sure people understand about why it's important. But typically when I ask a classroom, I do a lot of guest lecturing, when I ask a classroom of uh, kids, how many of you who even thought about environmental issues when you purchased your last piece of IT equipment, and they do that fairly frequently these days, very few hands go up. So even if they're not focused on buying HP, which of course is what I would like them to be, um, they should definitely be thinking about what is important to them. And the impact of IT is pretty significant um, from mining the metals all the way through to taking back the products and recycling them properly. Um, you know, HP, for instance, has uh, a wonderful closed loop inkjet cartridge recycling process and we've added enough plastic water bottles into that process, re reused the water bottles and the plastic from them in there. If you laid all those water bottles end to end, they'd wrap around the planet seven and a half times. That's how much we're doing in terms of recycling. So the plastic from your inkjet cartridge comes back to HP through our Planet Partners program. Uh, we take it back, we recycle it, uh, we put it back into new cartridges, and that's called closed loop recycling. And you know, isn't that important? You should be looking for products that have recycled content in them. You should be looking for paper that is FSC paper. Um, you as the, the buyer need to be thinking about these things. And uh, if you're unsure as to which are the best companies to be buying from, look for um, awards or recognition that other companies, it's not just us saying we're the best, uh, go and look at the Greenpeace Guide to Greener Electronics, for instance, or uh, I know HP Canada is one of the greenest employers in Canada. Um, go and check out some of those awards and lists to see what kind of company you want to do business with. I'd say because we really do take this stuff seriously. Um, from, as I said, mining metals uh, in the Congo, in the DRC, uh, we've actually just disclosed last year where all the smelters are that make the metals that go into the components that go into the products that we make. We've actually publicly disclosed where all those, uh, those smelters are. And given that we have thousands of suppliers in a $60 billion supply chain, that's a very big deal. We took the time and the effort to do that, not only to characterize our to know where the, the factories are, but also to characterize the footprint of the supply chain that we have. Um, and so we know that 36% of our total impact globally is in our supply chain, and we've been working for many years to reduce that footprint. We've now set goals to reduce that. None of our competitors have done that. Sure, anybody can go and pick up garbage or do a shoreline cleanup, and that's a great thing to do from a team building perspective. But really, um, that doesn't have that much value. We have a very highly skilled workforce, and we want those workers to be engaging their skills to the maximum benefit when they uh, leverage their four hours a month of paid volunteer time. So we have lots of programs to encourage them to do that. And um, getting them to think carefully about what skills they can use uh, when you're in business, you're using a wide range of skills that can help any kind of organization, even a school or a not-for-profit in general, still needs to have some basic business skills, whether it's accounting or uh, managing their IT properly. So we try to push our employees into to leveraging that four hours a month and give them opportunities that will be skills-based uh, volunteering. We're just about to launch one where... Uh, our own employees will go into a business of their choice and run through a checklist that we help develop with WWF um, and then that drives them to be thinking about their green teams working with their IT teams and procurement to think about greening their IT infrastructure. So um, all kinds of opportunities and it's, it's the better way to go. Typically when somebody starts their volunteering career, we talk of them as being a tourist and they want to be led into everything, they want to be bused to the location, they want everything to be ready-made for them. And you want to, to um, 
teach them how to then eventually lead volunteer events themselves. That's what you want. You want them to step up. Um, so there's a bunch of ways you can do that. You, um, you take them on volunteer events and then slowly give them little bits to do and sort of controlled amounts of work and here, why don't you do X, Y, and Z. Um, but it's about uh, developing yourself as a human as much as it is about the volunteering piece uh, and uh, pushing yourself and, and seeing... When people see the value of the work that they're doing from a volunteer standpoint, uh, it's amazing how engaging that is and how good it makes them feel. And, you know, we often say the best part of volunteering is, is, is the, the feelings you get, the, the, the self-satisfaction you get. It's not necessarily about the time you take or whatever. It's, it's, um, it's that good feeling that you get and you want more of it. It's addictive. One of the things we really want to encourage is entrepreneurship. It's a way for people around the world to get themselves out of the poverty trap. Um, so HP is en engaged in a couple of things. One is um, last week every HP employee received a $25 loan to give through the Kiva uh, micro lending platform, which has been a huge employee engagement piece for us and had absolutely fantastic uh, take up. We've already um, loaned over a million dollars through each $25 uh, dollar loan from an employee around the world, so that's great. Um, but the other thing is, we've been thinking long and hard about how to make the education materials that entrepreneurs around the world need available to them wherever they happen to be. So um, we actually have developed a program called HP Life, L-I-F-E, stands for Learning Initiative for Entrepreneurs. This is a free program that we know works. We've we put a lot of time and effort into building this. It's very interactive training, um, kind of state of the art in terms of how online learning happens. And there are courses in there uh, that spread the from basic finance and accounting all the way through to um, social media marketing. And we just added one on finding energy wastage in a business. So that's the first environmental course in there. This is freely available to anybody who wants to take it. It's available in five languages uh, via the cloud, so all you need is a computer and an internet connection, and you can go ahead and uh, get all the basics that you need to build your own business uh, and be successful. Changing the status quo is incredibly hard. It's much harder than it should be um, for a whole bunch of reasons, and maybe that's, that's the, the essence of it. Um, but we need change on a drastic scale much, much faster than we're used to changing. Otherwise, we're going to be facing change on a, a, global, a global catastrophic scale. So I would really say that, you know, we need the people that we're talking to in this video to be very aggressive in their ac activity. Um, you know, you need to know when to push and when to back off, but not ever to stop pushing. It is so important that we lead from all levels. And um, we have a lot of programs that empower people at all levels. I'll mention the WWF Living Planet at Work program, which is designed, uh, we've helped, we've worked with uh, WWF to put this together so that anybody in any business, anywhere, can get the tools and resources they need to start measuring the impact of their business and to start greening that business. And um, I'll refer us to the uh, HP footprint slide uh, where we measured the total impact of HP on a global scale. We have nearly 300,000 employees. Think about how much work went into that. But the interesting part about that was that we now know 60% of our impact is in our customers using our products. So we actually should be spending more time working with customers to help them reduce their footprint than we should reducing our own footprint. And we still have to do that, of course, and we have lots of goals and work going on there. But now we're very firmly focused on how can we help customers reduce footprint. And the great thing is, this is good for business as well. So Pushing from the, uh, to change the way businesses run today is really important and there's business opportunity and there's wins for the environment as well, so it's a great place to be. We need everyone from within every job function to be making the decisions with the environment in mind. Uh, that's not to say you, start this, you still need to make a profit, you still need to be in business, um, but every single thing you do, every daily action you take has a consequence. And you know, if, uh, if you're like me and you have a long cycle to work in the summertime, um, you know, you see how much carbon is being burned around you and you just put that lens on and think about it, oh my God, we have a huge job to change to become a low carbon economy, but it's possible. We just have to vision it and we have to take those steps. And it's the young people today who have the education, who've taken steps to educate themselves, to see how intercon interconnected everything is and to push and push and not stop until we make the changes necessary.